Good morning. Good morning. Hey, David. Good morning. You see us uh, turning on the uh, the agenda this morning. I think we both were on the same time. <laughs> I just updated the agenda just now. I think you were updating something else and I was updating something else. Hey, Samir. Yeah, I think just trying to get the right order of things, I guess, in terms of importance. Um, yeah. To cover. Yeah. Did you add the cozy spec status one? Yeah, I just added just to make sure uh, that is in progress because if we don't complete that, that will become the blocker, right? For RC1 because we already have the cozy in alpha four. Oh yeah, the issue where it's it's still up there with the PR, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And I think, um, yeah, yeah. Is anybody going to join, uh, David? He or Shive or uh, No, so the, chi I mean, the, the China team, this is like midnight their time. So that they're not- Oh, gonna... yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just just me. I'm not sure, I don't think Steve is gonna join. I think he was, like maybe covers it will come, but I think we should probably just maybe give it two more minutes and then we can get going. Yeah, sure. We can start 1205. Yeah. I was just going to pull up the PR that you mentioned there around the spec update. Yeah. yeah it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, uh, it's ready for review. So, um, but yeah, I do. I would say we need we need some people who approve it <laughs> on uh, on on both sides. Um, we have none from our side and none from uh, from your side. Sure. So I mean, it's it's already there in code. So. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little backwards to do the spec after but hey it's it's okay i mean it is what it is yeah Okay. Um, I think we can I think we can get started. Um, so you brought up um, Alpha Four. I can probably preempt the this one. I think I think provide a little more light on what you're what you're looking for there. Um, the uh, the ratify we can I actually turns out because the method is not uh, the the method itself is not um, removed on in alpha four itself, but it's removed after alpha four. We we can actually have ratify work. Um, there's a PR up right now um, to make it work. So I think we're okay there. 
Um, Which means, uh, David, are you telling the dependency yeah. on ratify, uh, ratify being dependent on notation is being removed now? No, so I, okay. I think that that um, I, I think that like basically once like like right now even with with the alpha four um, we can make it work without the trust or trust policy because because all Ratify is doing is verification right um, and and that's how we have it um, we still have that option in alpha four once we we remove that and we're verifying using the trust or trust policy, then we're going to have to actually implement trust or trust policy and ratify. And that um, is fine. Um, we just would want to, you know, we would want to make sure things work in that in that way. Um, so that we don't we can we can, you know, still do local verification with trust or trust policy, which I'm pretty sure is in, in plants. So I think um i think that's okay for now um i don't think we're more blocked right now per se on this um but i do think this ties back to the discussion around the local side of things um mm -hmm. cuz we don't yet yeah, like you put out put four different options into yeah, I saw that into that, and and we would need basically option three. But um, uh, Samir, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit more about ratify. So, I was looking at it yesterday. I was surprised by a couple of things. Number one, that uh, ratify is taking a code dependency on notation libraries. I was under the impression that ratify will do it as a plugin, whereby it's a runtime dependency you associate ratify with the notation client, like any other client. So uh, there will not be a uh, compile time dependency. So that was a surprise. And I was wondering, because I noticed you participate in the Ratify community meeting, um, what were the rationale, if you can share now or, or maybe share offline, I'd like to understand the rationale, the pros and cons of runtime versus a compile time dependency. That's the first thing. Second thing which I was surprised by was I noticed that Ratify also has a policy language which defines what kind of artifact level verification needs to be done. And I was just wondering aloud, uh, does it uh, conflict or, or do, now people will have to configure policy at two places, the Ratify policy and then the trust policy and notation so again, I'm not very up to speed on Redify. So I thought, uh, let me ask you, notice that you are yeah. that as well. Yeah, so you, so the idea is that, um, that those, those things, like you would use, like Ratify would just use whatever, like the trust or trust policy is for the verification. Um, that's not there today, right? We have that on the backlog, but, um, yeah, I, I think uh, there, in terms of the configuration of Ratify, you would need to still basically specify a configuration of where to get the certificates, which is how it is today. Um, once we migrate to trust or trust policy, we would then need to also know where Ratify can get that. And so we're, you know, we have an Azure Key Vault integration there today um and that's how we're getting the keys pulled down and then ratify will use that to you know with notation to do the verification um once we move to trust or trust policy um the same kind of thing will need to ha have happen um but obviously we'll have to update the code so that it utilizes the the whole thing but the, the idea would though be that trust or trust policy remains how it works um on the on the, like it does today um and it would just be kind of abstracted i would say from from the from the kubernetes configuration right um and that and that trust store trust policy would be configured in a secure location such as azure key vault does that uh, answer the no 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 it, part? no it does not maybe i need to attend some ratify sessions to get up to speed on it so so I was under the impression, like, again, it will be a runtime depend dependency. It's a compile time dependency. If it becomes a compile time dependency, then 
Uh, I'm just more concerned. So yeah, so so the so so the we we use you know no, notation go because we 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 bake that into the ratify binary because there's a, each at least today each verifier. Uh, you know, for instance, um, there's one for a license checker, there's one for an S bomb, right? There's one for notation. All yeah. of that is kind of compiled into the Ratify executable that runs on Kubernetes, right? Um, so, so that's kind of just, I guess, why we're doing that versus trying to like package executables or something, right? Um, like independently. <laughs> Uh, it just doesn't. It just makes things um, a lot more, I guess, complicated. Um, so, so you know, it, it's going to use the basically what the notation go um, to do the verification, and um, it will need, of course, the either the certificates or trust or trust policy um, moving forward uh, with. Any time it tries to do that, that verification on the on the, the cluster. No, I, I think David, my question was like, uh, as not as notation maintainers, or uh, do we want other uh, applications to take a uh, a compile time dependency on us versus a runtime dependency? What will be our recommendation to them? If they take a compile time dependency, then they'll Anytime we make a code change, they'll have to make a code change. So their customers will have to wait uh, until they recompile or regenerate their binary. First, uh, okay. so I think this, yeah. So I think this, so I think this comes back to kind of um, a conversation that I was I was having yesterday with uh, Steve and 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 uh, and Yi and Finman um, about like kind of compatibility of things moving forward. Yeah. So so. The, the and then there's two and there's two sides right uh, there's like we kind of we kind of talked about it like in terms of a data a data compatibility and a and a developer compatibility correct right? yep and the data compatibility what I mean by that is am I if I have let's say a um, you know like a user type configuration whether it's trust or trust policy with certain files on disk. Um, it could also be like the actual signature format, which is the, the I think the most important thing. Yep. Um, like if I sign something uh, with a certain version of notation, uh, you know, in number of versions later, can I still verify that artifact with notation? Right. Yep. Yep. That's kind of that 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 to me is like kind of the most the most important like type of thing for compatibility. Um, the other, the developer type compatibility is like, well, let's say we, you know, update notation go, um, and things are different, and you have to refactor code and other things. I'm, I'm less worried about that, um, even though, even though, let's say Ratify is doing that directly, taking that compile time dependency. Um, I, I think it, it's, it, it, like even right now, for instance, it's a case where we can work with it and we can spend time till we can make things right, so it'll, it'll work, right? Um, as long as, as long as that data signature part doesn't change, exactly. So right now, That's right true. now, since we're in alpha mode, it, it's it's not as big of a deal. But, but like once we we get to RC or or people are starting to take, well, let's say production dependencies on on this on the things that they're signing, um, it's it's actually going to be a really bad experience if we go from let's say RC one to RC two and. Um, even if the developer bits and bytes are changed, whatever. But if if the signature that somebody signed in RC one no longer is able to be validated with RC two bits, then that's a problem, right? That's that's a really bad experience. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. So we will not let that happen, right? So we will we as notation will make sure we maintain uh, backwards compatibility once RC one is put out there. That's the whole reason we are so diligent about it. Let's go back to the two problems you cited, developer uh, and, data. and data compatibility or agility, right? So developer agility will still be affected. Anytime we make a new code change in notation go, Retify will have to recompile. Uh, it could be a week, a day, two weeks, don't know how, how long their cycle will be. 
I think when we originally conceived Retify, we had said Retify will use a plugin architecture and you just specify which version of notation client to call. Like you just put it on the disk where Retify is installed and then Retify will call that executable of notation, if you will. If you go with that approach, then you remove the developer uh, constraint or the developer uh, compatibility issue that they will they can just point through configuration which version of notation client to use. Second, it also solves the data compatibility issue because all the data, all the config for signature verification resides inside notation. Unlike now where what I read yesterday made it seem like you have to configure something in Redify as well as something in notation for signature verification to work. The trust store and policy, right? Well, yeah, you're still gonna, no matter what, I mean, so all, no matter what, whether you use, let's let, let's just go with what your, your argument is. Let's, let's just say that Redify used the notation ex executable binary. Um, yep. There's still gonna have to be some way that Redify uh, gets the certificates and or trust or trust policy down onto the Kubernetes cluster, right? There's there's no way around that. You have, well, you have, you have hang on. So I was thinking, again, this is my, my mental model. My was mental model that getting the configuration on of, of the search store is up to notation how it gets it. And notation also gets installed. Similarly, how Retify gets installed. So Retify is not in the path of creating the trust store. It's notation which is responsible for creating the trust store directory structure and the user configures it somehow. Okay, yeah, so I see what you're saying. I mean, I think, yeah, I, so I guess that would, the, the advantage would be that um, instead of like what Ratify does today, which is basically puts puts the certificates in the place where notation, the notation needs to, you know, do its job, right? To verify, yeah. um, you would have the the CLI potentially be able to do do some of that work. But I, I really don't think that's a, a a really significant challenge today, I guess. But but today is it like trust or trust policy should be configured and it's redundant and has to be on both ratify as well as in notation? Yeah, I mean, as once we move to trust or trust policy, you have to have both on on the on the file system in order to to do verification, right? So you have to make that happen whether you're using notation via the binary or notation via notation go that's compiled during runtime. Okay. Yeah, I think let's let's park this discussion. I think I uh, just wanted to bring up as notation maintainers, what do we recommend uh, people to take dependency on? And uh, the way I see Retify um, as taking in a code dependency, which will slow them down some, it's their problem to solve. They should not be doing this. Uh, but if they do that, it's, you know, it's their project they need to think about. Uh, and then of course, then from a user perspective, I thought it will be configuring at two places that we want to avoid. Uh, that's the other thing. So let's talk about it. I think it's an open thing. I, I, I have not had a chance to discuss it with engineering, just at a high level, just me looking at it yesterday made me think, hey, this could be a challenge from a user experience perspective. From an engineering perspective, I don't have a viewpoint. Um, so let's park it and we'll I come back. We can to bring it. it on Monday. Somebody. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll have this agenda retained for Monday. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do that, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, David, and the next thing is Alpha 5 milestone. While, yeah. uh, while uh, I and E were discussing with respect to the estimations a couple of days, um, you know, in the row uh, this week, uh, E brought up uh, telling that uh, it's a good idea to do the release. Uh, one more release, um, like plan for a new release alpha five that can that we can include the verify using the trust or trust policy and also the new CLI spec. 
Yeah. So, yeah, no, I definitely think we should. I mean, I, th I also definitely think that would align with like kind of our conversations of releasing more regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, it would, you know, I know, I know there's like, we want feedback per the alpha four, we want feedback on trust or trust policy and some of the other things that are there. Good right. So, so, right. I, so I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I, I think that would be great. Um, I, I, the only thing I would, I would say, uh, or suggest is if we can go to like a beta one, um, because oh, okay. <laughs> I think five alphas is, is, a, is a lot and, and we've had a lot of progress on it and we're getting really close okay. to RC. Uh -huh. So I think it's, I think it's totally justifiable to, to switch to a beta, um, name. Okay. I can change that to beta one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, let me check what was the definition of beta to be sure we are getting yeah there's no there's no there's no really no impact it's just you're just saying uh, it's it's more stable but don't take dependencies on it um that, that's all so okay, the, the okay sounds good then. yeah there's not really any impact or change from uh from that perspective i think i think it's just more of perception and, and i think it's it's fair to for people to, with the maturity of where our code is at, um, to to not no longer say we're an alpha. I mean, things things aren't going to drastically, like crazily change at this point. I don't think. I just changed some of the verbiage in that section, so I think we can move to the next section. I think uh, the one thirty seven. I think we'll bring it up on Monday. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of, I mean, uh, us just seeing whatever we can have done at the end of the month um, and just release whatever that is. Um, I, I think the I, there's already quite a bit that's already that's already merged in the main after alpha four. So I think we just need to ideally try and um, you know like have have like a little bit of a work back so we're not you know, pushing that into, you know, two weeks delayed kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. like, you know, yeah. if we're going to, if we're going to, cause we still, we still have um, this uh, and maybe I should, maybe this is not on the agenda, but I, now that we're talking about the release, it's I think important. We have the, uh, the dev testing one that I know I've brought up a number of times and it, it's still sitting around and there's there's effort on uh, there's effort on both parts that we need you know at least for approvals but this this I think will help us at least a little bit to send in testing framework if we can get this reviewed and merged oh this um, one yeah because, yeah I mean it's 29 days old and you know we need we need to really capitalize on this so that it, you know we find issues during the dev releases and or um, speed up the time to test out things that may be broken with the releases so yeah that makes sense okay i think if we can i think if we can try and get this one uh, merged by by tomorrow um or by Sunday, I guess, when the dev build kicks off, then we can actually use it. Can you scroll down, David? What's pending? Who who is who has to do that? Uh, this is just somebody other feedback on it. It's easy, easy, easier to use a make. Um, oh, okay. Bring this up also with you yesterday. Um, I think at least on our side, some this developers kind of shuffled shuffled around a little bit. I don't I don't know if they're. Sounds like they may be off onto a different project, but I, I think either way, we, we can get this one um, merged with mm -hmm. you know, whatever feedback. We just need somebody to, to look at it and, uh, and get it in there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. Yeah. So, who is, who is currently doing that? Uh, there's there's at least I mean there's some developers on our side that are that are still active. Um, okay. They, okay. they can take it over, or we could 
get the um, person who did the PR to, to do any yeah. adjustments. Sure. Sure. But um, but yeah, that's I mean that and this is this is a foundational test framework, so it's it's not. Uh, it, it's a foundation where we can build upon it, right? There's, there's not like yeah, this is, test, yeah, every yeah. single test that that's possible here, but it'll at least get us on the right trajectory um, to where we, it's less we have to manually test after every push to main, right? Yeah, basically after this framework is merged, then we go with the verify, sign verify uh, those end-to-end -end integration testing. Uh, Automation. Yeah, yeah, we can right. add additional tests. Right. I think that Yi had already. I, I, I haven't looked, but I'm pretty sure he added a, um, a item to add additional test case here. Um, but this is. But then, I mean, the the framework part and the foundational pieces are here, so that it shouldn't. It went after this is merged. It won't be as okay. As okay. some to to add some additional tests. Okay. Okay. That's good. So. Um, Okay. Okay. Before next step release. Before next step release is, uh, <laughs> which is uh, on Sunday, right? Like. Yeah, I mean that's a that's an aggressive goal, but I, I mean. Yeah. Which nice is like. <laughs> which is like for your team, maybe, maybe it's a one on day. Sunday, like. Yeah, I'm it's one still, day like, activity. <laughs> At least we know it's going to be there for the next one. Um, yeah. I feel like if we just push it down to the bottom of the list, then then we won't have it for next week either. <laughs> I think the work is done. It's just the review part of it they have right. to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so let's see. RC one. This is the RC one date. Uh, what? Uh, we were talking about is uh, is based on the estimates. Uh, that we saw and based on the work remaining, we thought we can target RC1 for 1115, at least if we have a date, we can work backwards towards that. Otherwise it keeps slipping the date yep. for release, right? Yep. <laughs> Same concern we all have uh, from, yep. from the past learning. So uh, there are some that is not estimated that is based on the some of the documentation uh, issues. And uh, uh, one of them is because of the dependency. I'll talk to Rakesh so that we can unblock that dependency for one of the estimation. And a couple of things he said is going to work with Shiva in order to get the estimate. Like for example, the system versus the user file directory, we decided that we'll go with the user level and not the system level in RC1. So we need to see if we have to um, have a separate issue for both and uh, just estimate for the user level. So that is one of the things that needs to be cleaned up and we need to kind of do the estimate at the user level. I yeah, think that- I mean, Unfortunately, I wasn't a part of this discussion on the 17th and I think I maybe came into the call late or something. Um, yeah. But I, I, uh, I understand Steve's concern. Um, I, I guess, so you're saying at this point, we've shifted to say we're gonna only do system and not user? Is that No, right? user and not system. Um, because on Thursday, Sajai, Shive, um, Pratesh, all the technical folks uh, kind of came to that conclusion along okay. with Roy in the meeting. Oh, Roy in the meeting too, okay. Yeah, Roy right. was also in the meeting. Okay. Somebody do you okay. want to add anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, it, and it's not like we're gonna get rid of system, the system option. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of, it's in the, it's an item uh, part right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, and I think that this, this kind of comes back to the desire for Tesh of like doing a battle test thing. I mean, because this would be, like per Steve's comment, this would be like kind of a potentially obvious uh, way to way to hack something, <laughs> right? If it's a user yeah, thing, yeah. you can just, well, who cares? I'll just add my my malicious certificate in there, and right. I'm good, you know, right. or or hack what I trust, and 
then what does it matter, right? Right, right. So I don't know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we did yeah. we did not get the use case for why we should go with system level and user level and all that. Uh, yeah, I think if there's and way, I think if there's I think the Steve's main concern is just really like if there's if we know there's a way that there's the bad actor scenario is not going to mm -hmm. be a problem. Um, yeah. yeah. Then cool, but you know I think that's the. That's the concern there. Okay. Yeah, from a from a functionality user perspective, yeah, whatever. I mean, sure, just go user, and that's easier, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, user. Yeah. yeah, I think majority of the work is done. Uh, Shiva, what Shiva said is we might have to refactor some of the uh, in some of the places where we go with the user level instead of looking into the system level as well. So. Uh, mm. Okay. That's that's what the discussion was. Okay. Um. On on uh, Monday. Um. Samir, you want to add anything on upon that or it's. So I was trying to find the mute button. Uh. No, I think that's it. I think that was the discussion. Let's incrementally build it. There wasn't a one-way door which was identified that if we don't do it now, it will be a problem later. So I think based on that. Right, right. You mean like like if we don't just stick it to user now, it'll be a problem versus having this weird kind of hybrid mode or something? Yeah, I don't think so. We the the engineers on the call identified a one way door. So if let's say we just launch with user now and tomorrow we need to support for systems as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll be fine with that versus going like like having both and then going backwards, then it'll be more problematic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that gives us, I mean, it would give more time to kind of flush out the design and other things. Uh, right. And he said he's going to work with the team internally to see what that estimation looks like and uh, yeah. well, also was, break it down into two different yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, I also just think, I mean, there might be a way where if we know we're going to eventually do system where we kind of leave the code there, but don't use it so to speak right um right i'll let them I'll that's let them exactly know. that's exactly what shiva was trying to tell david like yeah. right now if it is looking into system so we just want to refactor that code right okay um so this debug option i know is like three weeks of effort um and that's currently in scope but i don't think we have we don't have any of the local stuff in scope right now, right? Right, right. So I kind of, I mean, my, I mean, this, and I was talking with Shiwei on this and Steve yesterday too. I mean, my gut is like, um, if we, because that's, this is the biggest amount of effort, right? Um, and, I, and I do think we definitely need it. Um, but do we need it for RC1? I I don't think it's, it's, it's essential. For RC1, um, I, I feel like especially if we're going to kind of get into like, let's say, you know, every twice a month or two week releases, like we could, you know, release, right. release it a couple weeks after um, and be okay because this isn't going to change the user, uh, the functionality, right? It's only going to enhance the debuggability. So I would, I mean, I'm kind of saying that's an option, but what I what I do think um, we should, like, if we had to trade. I would I would actually say we should look at um, the let's go back to I think this was on the agenda right the local uh, hmm? the the actual local signing story the offline one. oh local signing story I didn't I don't think we even concluded that isn't it the only thing is we discussed that uh, local content is not the blocker but local key is a blocker. But I don't think we can. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah. Okay. So if we scroll down, we're talking about this. Um, That's so where he, the, the yeah. Option three is the thing that we we want, right? Because this, I, I think it's totally fine to 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 forget about this scenario for 
for RC1. I think that's okay. I, and then this one, I think it's also totally fine with it being a demo testing, whatever. So I think there we're okay. The, the thing where I, I, I kind of would want to see if we can push on is number three, because, because this actually um, is a really, I feel like a really important thing for the CICD workflow, the offline, the other things, and it has some refactoring components to it and relating to the notation Go library. Um, that might be not the best if we totally change that, right? So like if I had to trade, I would trade this implementation for the debug ability on RC1. But the discussion, I think, was on local key, right? Samir, sorry, go ahead, Samir. No, no, uh, yeah, I think if you look at Steve's comment, even he's saying number two and number four are more important. I think number three is not required. I'm just thinking about the use case for number three. Uh, David can hear, I can hear more from you as to what is the use case. I don't see a good use case for number three um, at this time for RC1. Well, yeah, I mean, so it's so it's if you have uh, if you have an artifact locally, you need to uh, artifact and signature signature local, like like um, on a on a Kubernetes cluster <laughs> or on your local machine, and you want to just verify that signature with your with notation. But see, that's verification. This is about signing verification. I completely get. Let's separate verification from it. This is about the signing part of it. Right. So, but for verification, we don't really have that either. And so I, I think. No, so for verification, we have that, right? So for verification, uh, uh, you will always, for verification, uh, you will like to, to, to support uh, air-gapped environments. We design verification to be such that you have the certificates in your search store, which will be used to do verification. And then if you want to have the artifact locally, uh, you can. You can have the artifact locally and you can verify it. Uh, but by when you say locally, you mean in a local repo or you mean in a... Uh, like you're like I have, let's say I have uh, just doc, Docker uh, installed on my local like, machine and I have yeah. it pulled down and it has... Uh, or I guess, well, I guess, yeah, because at this point we only use the registry, the OCI registry. So there's really no verify with the artifacts there without a registry. Correct. So that's why I don't think so three is a requirement for... Um, when, uh, uh, Samir, quick question, right? When we say local artifact, is it like local registry having a repo in, within the registry? Is that or, what we call local no, artifacts? Sorry, no. I'm trying to understand. Yeah, yeah I, I'll help. Uh, so, so the context is this local means it's present on disk. It is not checked into a repo yet. Oh, okay. It is present mm -hmm. on disk. It's not in a repo. So you're not doing a Docker pull to get the image or to get the signature. It is local mm -hmm. on, on disk. Uh, on disk. On disk. And yeah. we support that? No, we don't. From, okay. a, from a signing perspective, we don't. And the reason okay. for that is we actually sign the manifest of the image. We don't sign the image itself. So you have the image locally, uh, which could be two gigabyte long, but mm. you don't sign the image, you sign the image manifest. Mm. And how do you get the image manifest? In uh, the repo. Yeah, you get it when the image is put in the repo, you get the image manifest from there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for us, okay. Only if it is within the repo, we, our scope is there, otherwise it's, not in scope. Well, there are use cases where it will be good to sign it locally even before you push it into a repo. Like then you're signing it as close to the build. Like you just built it locally on disk. Mm -hmm. And before you even push it to a repo, you would like to sign, sign. it. Correct. That, that will be a good security guarantee as well. Exactly. But yeah. for reasons I just described about the image manifest, we are saying we'll do the signing once the image is in a repo. It could be a local repository. It could be a remote repository. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. to be a repository. Mm -hmm. But this just being present on disk. Got it. So, yeah. so, so, so RC1 scope will be local repository, not on the local disk. 
Yes. But Finding. this table, yeah, but this table meant local disk. This table went because oh, this table is local disk. That's this, oh, okay. okay. That's what you asked, you. right? What does local mean here? This table meant local disk. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go back to it. I think number two and number four is fine uh, for our RC one. Uh, but for number two, I'm I think that we are we are rehashing the challenge for number two. If the key is present local and we don't have a good way to encrypt it, how do we stop users from taking it in production? Do we get add warnings? Do we like what do we do? That was the concern. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that I mean, I think I, I think there's I mean, two things we could do is just in the uh, two places, right? In the release notes, which not everybody reads, but then also I think if we wanted to put something in the CLI, when somebody like when somebody does a, uh, a sign, right? Because for verify, who cares, right? Like, <laughs> you know, but for but for signing is when is where you would want to warn, like throw a warning uh, and say, hey, this is for, you know, like t demo, t you know, testing purpose uh, type of thing. That's what I would, that's what I would say, right? After, after the sign and you, you know, you, 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 you specify some kind of warning message um, along with the, I signed the thing. Yeah, that, I think- would that be yeah. sufficient, you think, Samir? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, so I think when Roy looked at this problem, he proposed four possible solutions. We need to pick from one of them. I think that was the last we debated. Uh, I, I don't have that handy as to where he put his comments in, but he, had, he or Milan had proposed four options. We let to we we have to let them choose. Now that we have all spoken from one voice, that we like number four for sure. Number four is what people will take production dependency on. Number two is for testing. Let's just solve the number two for testing. How best to communicate it, and we can go back on Monday's meeting to what was suggested and pick an option. Yeah. Is there any way that uh, Samit like uh, we can ask uh, Melinda or? Roy to bring those options into this story, right? We can. Uh, I think, let me find where that was discussed. Check on 44. Let me check on 44. Because 44 and 15 were all mixed up. No, not in 44. 44 is not there. Yeah, this is the one. Let me send a link. Copy link. Let me put it here. Let me put it in the chat. Okay. So you can pull it up, putting it in the chat. 31. Okay. Plugin inter integration. Why is it in plugin integration? I am not the technical expert to tell you. <laughs> Sorry, I am in the same boat, Samir. I'm uh, just so this is so, but this is though for the permanent fix, like so for the we're going to production support in that scenario, right? Ah, uh, I'm reading. I don't quite, yeah, I don't quite follow his comment here, um, but I do understand what he means with all, all of this. Um, but this is really the permanent fix. This is not the, the warning type message, right? Um, so I, I think 
Um, I didn't think of it as a permanent fix. I just thought of it at that time we were going with the alpha three or at that time we were debating alpha three. I thought it was just for that alpha three to. I mean, I, I think that it's it's a deal where, right, like, <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we're generally not recommending it for, for production use as, as a, because we know that there's this limitation in securing the local key, right? And so it really is a scenario where if a certain, a, there, we, we have a known certain type of attack which could occur it's not that the signing in and of itself is bad or totally invalid. It's just that it's it has a security risk, right? So it, I, I feel like we just need to be more clear on that um, and let people make their own decisions. And then I think down the road, if we want to, let's say, make uh, if we want to make you know this an actual production supported scenario, then we would need to do one of those options that okay um that Roy Roy's mentioning um so that we can eliminate the security risk that's there okay all right um I'm I'm aligned now so okay so let's document what we just discussed here that we will give some kind of warning which tells user don't do it in production it's a bad idea and because the keys are in plain text uh it's not a secure way of signing or something. Yeah, yeah. I think this probably shines a light that if we create a new plugin in notation where people can use a USB key, that it probably shines a light on that, that at least we can tell people who want to use local keys, at least have them store the local keys on a USB, on a secure HSM like a USB key. That's maybe an idea, but again, not for RC1. Okay. Not for RC1. Samir, you had one uh, additional item, right? For RC1, for discussion. I. Yeah, I created what, one. I yeah. completely I, forgot to add that in oh, the agenda. Fine. I created a roadmap item. I was just reviewing uh, and uh, getting some customer feedback on where we are. Um, if you remember, uh, David, we have extended attributes. Uh, okay. Let me show you where we are. Let me point uh, where that is. If you go this coming up, so I think we're good here. Does this make sense, what I'm writing here? Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Uh, let me okay. uh, So back to the meeting notes. Um, cozy spec status um, really just need people to review it. I link to it. Yeah. It's been up there ready for review. I reserve. I, I actually fixed the merge conflicts and some other things here with this. So, and the DCO checks and all that. Uh, what about a month ago, I guess? So, it's been ready for review since then. So, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I, yeah, we need the code reviewer people to, uh, to look at this at this point. So, okay. it's kind of like I said, it, it, it really is at this point kind of like. It should match the code that's already merged. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, um, but yeah, uh, it is something that we definitely it should match the code that is already merged. For yeah. RC1. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. But this we, is the I offline. Think, you know, the I, think on this, I feel like on the offline thing. Um, yeah. So I think we're okay there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I think 44, we discussed that we'll move it out and we'll focus the local key thing in 15. That's where he updated everything in 15 and not in 44. 
Yeah, this is the user story. And so this is the this is the spec part. Um, so I yeah, I mean user story, right? I mean when we kind of continue to stick to this pattern, user story is like what's the end of the scenario you want. What I would say is like after if with this if, with this decision in mind, um, I, I I think we really should um, probably like like close out what's done and then you know check off what's what part is done and, and maybe like this is a good like thing to update the the actual user story with um, so that we're more clear because you know we, we ideally want people to not have to read through like a mountain um, to figure out what <laughs> what's working what's not and what's shipped and what's not right so this is obviously an uber everything scenario um, and, and I think we just need to hone, hone it in a little more and, and split it up sure. that makes sense Because this is, let's see, so this is uh, with local storage, which is different, right? That would be the the local artifact one, right? Local signature local artifact, which we don't have. Um, then this is the st local storage spec, which is accompanies that. And then this is the signing for the local key, uh, which is also related to this, right? No, no, that's related to number two as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, except for number two, this we we do it today, just not to the production capacity. So yep. all of the local pieces are actually still in this story, but uh, <laughs> yeah, basically not. I don't know. We could, yeah, I guess we could just leave it for the second and not none of it's really done with the local part. Yeah. Minus the demo scenario. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's what was in agenda. Yeah. Anything else, David, Summit? No, I think just a quick feedback. We are debugging an issue of using alpha four and we are seeing that alpha four doesn't work yeah. with ORS implementation, the not the OCI implementation, but the ORS implementation with uh, a production registry. So we are still debugging that. Uh, don't have an issue file on that. Can you ask again, David? Sorry. Is there an issue file filed on that? Not file because we haven't concluded if it's a you know user error or config issue. Uh, so alpha three is working fine. Alpha four is causing a problem. So we are checking if some config has to be changed. So I haven't created an issue yet. We, we saw it yesterday. So still debugging. Is, is it on Slack? No, no, not in Slack. I think we are internally testing it. Uh, so once okay. we can. I ha yeah, I have no idea about that. So I guess. But but you have not heard of any alpha four issue yet, right? No, I have not. Well, the only one was the one that this uh, person posted on the Notary V two channel, and I, I haven't really checked back. Oh, let me see. The one that was from yesterday on Notary V two, and I replied, and they didn't reply after that. Um, they're saying that. Yeah, Sarvesh posted that, and he was not sure if it is. Uh, uh... I don't, I don't know what he means by run any notation through VS Code. I have no idea what that means. Like, I, I mean, I, I use VS Code but, and I use notation, but like he says that notation works with VS Code. Or sorry, notation works with CLI, but it doesn't. CLI, work with but code, which is what I, I'm, that's why I'm confused as to what that means. Like, I don't, I, I get, I know what the error is. Okay, cool, you've got an error, but from how or where, like, what did you do to set it up with? With VS Code, right? I don't. I don't know. Do you understand what I'm what I'm saying there? Yeah. So I, I don't. I don't know if that's an issue for us or you know. VS VS Code. Um, yeah. So he's running on Visual Studio Code. Uh, no. CLI is the yeah, command so prompt answer, itself. Yeah. Uh, he's telling it works there, but when he goes on the Visual Studio, it's not working. But have we done that? 
in the past? But yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how he's using it in VS code that like that is causing him that problem, right? I don't understand what, what like how does he get that message, you know? Mm. I and mean, it could be potentially a problem. I mean, because it definitely we know that the trust policy thing is there. It sound it smells like a bug, but like I <laughs> I don't, I don't know what they're doing, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that's the only other thing I've heard of. I guess your question is, is there any issues with the seam with Alpha 4? That's the only thing I, I know of. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll create an issue if we think it's the Alpha 4. I'm trying to validate the config first. Okay. okay. Um, Okay, but let's go back to the uh, other date, right? So what date can we project now? We have done the hard work. We have the estimates in here. What date we can project for RC1? And for the unassigned task, do we want to assign those names right now? Yeah, so did anybody, um, did anybody work on the uh, website item that I created from? Uh, Number of meetings ago for RC1. Which is that? Um, uh, it is. Which is that link? That's on the Notary Project website. Uh, <coughs> documentation of this desired. 77. Yeah, I tagged, I tagged you all on this. No, not yet. I didn't get a chance to look at this. How do um, we? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like, I mean, what is it like? Like, you know, what is it? Because there's like, I just, I just did again. I just did a quick, quick review of what's on the web. Like, if we click around on the website and we look at the content that's there, like this, these, these three links are all blank. Um, so obviously that's bad, right? And you know. The there's there's a number of different tasks that are already there in the dev website that probably need to be like assessed and, and either executed on or or just closed. Um, but yeah, I mean the website's better after we had a huge push from um, from Zach, but it, it's still not like done, right? Yeah, let's park the documentation, but besides the documentation, anything which requires engineering work uh, is, is, is that estimated. Let's look at that. Vani, you can sort it by effort weeks to see which ones are negative ones. And if those negative ones are engineering ones, then let's talk about that. Yeah, so there's this one with GitHub actions approval. Um, I, I created this item because we've had a number of conversations on this that was asked by Melind. Um, uh, it, there's a way to do it with GitHub environment approval gates, but you would need to basically have an action workflow for the, the libraries um, because you saw how to do it, right? Um, but it's still, you're now going to need to use it, an actual action to do the release. There's a number of ones out there, you just have to pick one, and then you have to tie it to the approval gates with the environment to do the release. So somebody needs to estimate that. Um, and then the threat modeling thing uh, would be the other one, right? That needs estimation two days. Like I said, the threat modeling thing, I think I, what uh, I and E discussed is the first, there are three items in there. First two items are taken care. Um, but uh, the last one to do was also conflicting with the other to do, which Pritesh has the row number 100 there, that issue number 80. Uh, so that is kind of conflicting with that. And uh, we just wanted to see if we, if there is any more clarity on the to do's in the threat modeling itself. So that's about it. Otherwise I think, uh, <laughs> Okay, well, I, I do have to jump. Um, I, I think yeah. we're in a pretty, pretty good place um, for getting things going. And I think we should just pull over what, what's 
basically done that we or what we expect to be done for um, the beta beta one uh, and I guess we have 11 days for that and then uh, and then still try and target in mid, mid November for, for still uh, based on what I and E discussed last night is uh, we we still think 11.15 is the date for RC1, but uh, David, we want to make sure uh, all the minus ones are estimated uh, uh, and uh, and see what is that that we cannot make for that date and see if there is any help needed from either of the teams, you know, yeah. just okay. to get to that date. I think we have to. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, to be confident, yeah. you got to estimate the rest. I totally understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Thank have you. a good one. Thanks.